Here in the United States, we are alarmed by the new calls to adopt socialism in our country. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free, and we will stay free. Breaking news, the media is made up of socialists and communists and Marxists. While this is no surprise to most of us, it's still mind-blowing that a capitalist endeavor like network media or cable media would be out there promoting socialism as the future of America. Some of these so-called journalists are even saying it's too late, we're already socialists. And they point to all these broken government programs as proof that socialism's cool. And that we've always been socialists, so it's no big deal. So imagine my totally not sarcastic surprise when Sam Donaldson expressed butthurt over the fact that Donald Trump was attacking socialism during the State of the Union. I'm, I'm having flashbacks to the Newsweek article when Barack Obama was president that declared that we're all socialists now. The president there talking about socialism. Is he laying out a line right. of attack that we're going to hear heading into 2020? Well, it's too late. Over half Americans are on socialist programs from the federal government. I'm on Medicare, I'm an old guy, and Medicaid, welfare programs, not just for the poor, mm -hmm. for the rich. Hey, how about a sugar subsidy to the ranchers and farmers? Let's buy you some wheat since you can't sell it in the market at the moment. We are already on the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a few years, we're going to have a single payer system, I think. The public is pushing toward it. Unless you say, but that's socialism. Well, no, I don't want that. But I do want good medical care, and I want the government to pay for it. Okay, so then... We're, we're a socialist country already. So then... It really makes you wonder if a bunch of these so-called journalists in the media aren't actually Soviet spies. I, I know, it sounds crazy. But how else do you explain the gushing over Fidel Castro when he passed away? It was insane. I even did a couple videos on it when it was going on, and YouTube actually blocked all of them worldwide, meaning nobody could see them at all anywhere. I'd show you those clips right now, but I really don't need YouTube breathing down my neck any more than they already are. But here's a few choice quotes. This one's from NBC correspondent Andrea Mitchell. A declared socialist, he dramatically improved healthcare and literacy. He never tolerated free elections or dissent, but gave his people better healthcare and education. Doesn't that sound like your typical left-wing fake journalist talking about Democrats? It just goes to show something that I've warned about for years now. One of the reasons the left is so dangerous is because they just seem to have this ability to rationalize things. And I've always thought that they could rationalize just about anything. I mean, even rounding us all up in trains and sending us off to concentration camps. I know that sounds crazy, but... I can totally see these people rationalizing it. And you're you're seeing it here. She's rationalizing the brutal dictatorship of Fidel Castro because his people got some health care and education. A lot of good that did the country. And here's another one from an ABC correspondent. Even Castro's critics praised his advances in health care and in education. Fidel Castro was considered, even to this day, the George Washington of his country. Are you kidding me? Look at the country that George Washington built, that George Washington started and helped to build. Look at Cuba. It's a shithole. What scientific advances has Cuba come up with? Who looks to Cuba for leadership in anything? And here's another one from a CBS correspondent. It is a long and complex career. There is the analysis that will say, look, this guy took power, shut down speech, put people in prison, had human rights legacy that was quite challenging and difficult for many people who were on the other end of it. On the other hand, he rewrote the social contract in Cuba in a small island nation in which he put healthcare, education, culture, and capacity for Cuba to have independent foreign policy front and center as part of his legacy. So you're seeing again here these leftists in our country, in America, justifying, rationalizing brutal dictatorships because he allegedly gave his people all these things that left-wingers in America today think should be given by the government. And I'll go off on just a little, little side rant here, but 
you know what? A lot of the world that has national health care, they're able to do that because America is over here making all the medical advancements because we have privatized health care here, and which allows for companies to make money, make profit, which they then put into R&D, which is why if you look at the advancements uh, the world over, uh, medical advancements, the vast, vast, vast majority, and I'll show a little graphic here proving it, come from America. There's a reason for that. If America goes to nationalized government health care, you can say goodbye to that stuff. Who's going to start coming up with the advance? Who's going to be coming up with these advancements once America is not doing it any longer? The answer is nobody. The advancements will just slow down and they'll trickle in and you'll just see mediocrity take over the entire planet. So it seems that that former Soviet KGB defector might have been right when he warned about the communist brainwashing of America. And he may have been talking about people like Osceo Cortez or AOC as she's known now. She put out a new list of goals for her so-called Green New Deal. It seems like a red deal to me with things like welfare for people who are, quote, unwilling to work and Medicare for all. AOC's socialist policies excite the media and the left wing and even has them wondering if America's ready to jump off the socialist cliff. A couple of moments in the speech actually where the president talked about socialism. He started talking about what's happening, of course, in Venezuela, but then he said, here in the United States, we are alarmed by new calls to adopt socialism in our country. You, of course, mm -hmm. have identified yourself as a democratic socialist. Mm -hmm. Do you think he was talking to you? Do you think socialism would be a winning message or a winning position in 2020 for Democrats? Well, I think at the end of the day, it's not about an ism. And I think that that's what the, exactly the president is trying to do. He's trying to mischaracterize, frame, associate, because our policies are so popular. I'll say it's not going to be easy to stem this socialist tide. The media and the Democrats are basically telling people that they don't have to work. They can have all this free stuff. I mean, they're making it seem like the only thing that's making people's lives hard is the Republican Party and conservatives. When the truth is, is that Republicans and conservatives deeply care about this country and don't want to see it go in that direction. And I get so tired of these people citing Nordic countries as examples of good socialism. These countries don't even consider themselves socialist. But even if they were, what is it that they contribute to the world? Does anybody look to Sweden for leadership? Does anybody look to Denmark for big scientific advancements? There's nothing very exceptional about these countries. They are countries that have given in to mediocrity and the nanny state. In my opinion, there's nothing to look up to there. There's nothing to emulate. But the harpies over at The View think socialism is great. And it's just those mean, nasty white men who are trying to demonize the word. I have to say the word socialist is now becoming a buzzword like liberal and feminist, where the right wing is now taking that word and distorting it. So every mm -hmm. time you use it, I'm going to interrupt you. But how is it what Ocasio-Cortez is yeah. saying? Yeah. Yeah. It is being it's used. Being, it's being, it's being, being weaponized. It's being bastardized, that word. Mm -hmm. One really has to wonder how America became so great without socialism. <laughs> look, Joy, socialism doesn't need to be bastardized. Its effects are everywhere if you look at the third world and just open up a history book. We all know what socialism is. Socialism is government control of industry. It's the removal of self-reliance and self-responsibility and the introduction of mass mediocrity. It's the destruction of what made this country what it is and the recreation of a new leftist tyranny. No, thank you. Hey, YouTube, Drone Tech here. As some of you might already know, a few days ago, YouTube demonetized my entire channel. I still don't know why that was done. It had nothing to do with copyright violations or anything like that. It had something to do with reusing content, I'm guessing, something to do with the news clips. This is a big problem for me because recently I quit a good paying IT job that I had been at for five years so I could be a stay at home dad and do YouTube full time. It seemed like a good idea. Now I'm left trying to figure out how to continue doing my job. With the election coming up, it's going to be imperative that I'm out there churning out videos every day, calling out the media when they lie. And I can guarantee you that this election, the media is going to be replete with Democrat Party propaganda. What I'm getting at here is that I absolutely need your support to continue doing this job. If you enjoy my content and you agree with my message, then I implore you to consider to subscribe to either Patreon or my Subscribestar page. And also, I want you to consider that I'm not going to be restrained by YouTube anymore on the kind of videos that I can make. 
there's a lot of topics that I don't touch because I know YouTube will flag that as not advertiser appropriate. No matter what happens, I'm going to continue doing this in some capacity. Still, I absolutely need your support. You can also donate to me through PayPal. And while I deeply, deeply appreciate that, what I really need right now is consistent subscribers on either Patreon or Subscribestar. I appreciate your time, and I thank all of you for the outpouring of support that I've received since this happened.